And now we'll hear Cecile talk about herself. Cosima Caminantes. Never heard the name Cosima before. Then again, I don't know many people from France. Is it a common name? No, not that common. But Wagner's second wife was named Cosima Francesca Gaetana Wagner. Huh. You know, Kojima is a common last name in Japan. Kaz. It's just funny how, you know, I'm part Japanese and Cecile's middle name is so close to Kojima. It feels like destiny unfolding. Holy shit, Kaz. <laughs> you think so? Oui, oui. That's a beautiful name you have. Cecile Kosima Kaminades. Wait a second. Cecile Kosima Kaminades. Kosima Kaminades. Hey, that's close to... Close to what? Your name. It sounds almost like the sentence Kojima Kaminandes in Japanese. And what does it mean, s'il vous plaît? Well, Kami is the word for God in Japanese. Nandesu. Well, it's hard to explain. But placed after God, it would turn the sentence into is God. Okay. So? Kojima is God. Cecile's name is a message. I don't believe it. Kojima is God. Kojima is God. Um, cuz. Jesus Christ, Kojima, and Kaz, and everyone. How are you enjoying Mother Base so far? Ah, it is wonderful. Good to hear. I was worried someone as cultured as you would find the plant a little uncouth. Uncouth? You've got albatross, and frigate birds, and terns, and tropic birds. Seabirds I have never had a chance to see in France. Oh, well, uh, great. I'm sorry. I know I should not spend all day chasing birds. Is there anything I can help with? I appreciate the offer, but I'm not sure what I could ask you to do. Well, I'm certainly not cut out to shoot a gun. Cecile, where'd you learn to move through the forest like that? The birds weren't scared of you at all. Becoming one with the forest is the very essence of bird watching. They want to behave naturally if they sense a human nearby. And that can really affect your observations. I see. Kind of like scouting then. I am also good at spotting birds from a distance, tracking them based on the tiniest of clues, and being aware of my surroundings. You're starting to sound even more like a scout. The only way to find a bird is to think like a bird. Now, think you can find a place for me? Yeah. <laughs> if we need to find some birds. She certainly has a positive attitude about being on Mother Base. Oh boy. Oh boy. Paris. Did you live in Paris your whole life before coming here? Ah, yes. It is my favorite city. Paris is the world capital of art and culture. It has the latest fashion, the best cuisine, and the most elegant, refined people. The beauty of the Champs-Elysees at night is almost unearthly. The name comes from Elysium, the name of paradise in Greek mythology. Heaven, in other words. Hmm. Must be nice for some people. Not for me. Are you saying the cultured life does not appeal to you? I'm saying I never had a chance to lead one. Not that it appealed to me anyway. You prefer war? I don't like war. Life outside heaven just suits me better. That is a hard way to live. But if you do ever come to France, I will show you around Paris. Then you will see what heaven on earth is really like. Well, that's kind of lewd. Heaven on Earth, huh? The only image I have of France is the Foreign Legion. Ah, uh, that, that is how you view France? What do the French think of them? Mm, it is a difficult question. We normally don't think about it so much. Well, critics claim it forces foreigners to take on the most dangerous missions so French citizens won't get hurt. Mm, you are right. That probably had something to do with why it was created. 
But I understand that along with service comes benefits, such as French citizenship and permanent residency. Those who join are all given an equal chance, regardless of race, religion, education, social status, or national origin. So it can be a godsend for people from poor countries. Hmm. A way for the have-nots to live a decent life. I guess that's not so different from MSF. <laughs> kind of a jump. I don't know. There's one other image I have of France. The national anthem. Ah, La Marseillaise. Not everyone is a fan, of course. Though, to armed citizens, may an impure blood water our furrows thing, eh? This song was composed right after the French Revolution. Fearing what the tide of the revolution represented, the ruling classes in neighboring countries applied all kinds of pressure on the young government. La Marseillaise became the anthem of the volunteer armies that sought to protect constitutional rule against that pressure. And they couldn't do that without armed force. We, oui, I agree, some parts are a little belligerent. But we must not forget that if it were not for them, France would not be the democracy it is today. Mm hmm. It's a very interesting anthem. Have you ever seen The Umbrellas of Cherbourg? A movie? No, never seen it. No? It came out ten years ago. <sighs> Catherine Deneuve. She's so beautiful in it. And the music, the costumes, the colors. <gasps> ah. Huh. It takes place in the naval port of Cherbourg. That was a beachhead in Normandy. It is set back when young men were conscripted to fight in the Algerian War. Hmm. The French government called the conflict a public order operation in northern Africa. I was still a little girl then, but I can clearly remember one of my friend's older brothers going off to fight. Yeah, national service is required in France. The war splits up two young lovers. Director Jacques Demy's lyrics and Michel Legrand's music. Ah, tore at my heart. I will never forget its wonderful melodies. Are you okay? It changes lives. Changes fates. War is not a good thing. For some reason, it strikes a chord to hear that coming from someone like you. Hmm. Snake is touched. Guess I gotta check out that movie. Hmm. Speaking of the Algerian War of Independence, you ever hear of the Day of the Jackal? Ah! You mean the novel that was made into a movie last year? The OAS, a militant French underground group, plots to assassinate de Gaulle, hiring a hitman known as the Jackal. Readers know that de Gaulle was not killed, but it is still so exciting. If someone was going to try to eliminate me, I would hope they would be as thorough as the Jekyll. To know everything about me, without me suspecting a thing. Oh, yeah? Hmm. I wonder if my birds feel the same way. I wonder. It's kind of creepy, Cecile, but yeah, I, I guess so. France conducted its first successful nuclear test in the Algerian Sahara in 1960. A lot of French scientists took part in the Manhattan Project. They defected to America to escape wartime occupation. Correct. And once the war was over, they returned to France and continued their own atomic research. President de Gaulle did not want to have to rely on the American nuclear umbrella for protection. <laughs> Thus making France the world's fourth nuclear power. Some say the test success pacified the Algerian rebels. The civil war was undoubtedly held in check. But never have I equated nuclear weapons with peace. Weapons? Macaroons. France has produced many philosophers over the years. 
Descartes, Bataille, Sartre, Baudrillard. Yeah, I'm familiar with Sartre myself. He called Che Guevara the most complete man of the century, didn't he? Smart guy. He does <laughs> tend to sympathize with the left. And what else do you know about him? That's it. You know nothing else? Nope. Ooh la la. The man is one of the giants of existentialism, you know? Existentialism? Mm. Uh, I've been meaning to look into that. Nothing more dangerous than sneaking in without first securing an exit. <laughs> no, existentialism. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder if my English is not better than yours. Sorry, I'm just not into philosophy. Ah, is that so? I would imagine it might really enrich your life. <laughs> I'd rather take action now than spend time thinking about what we are or how we're supposed to live. I guess you could say, I live my philosophy. Interesting. That sounds like something Sartre would say. Yeah? He says we are born with no defined nature, and that we are free to make ourselves what we wish. Free? So he was one of those devil-may-care kind of guys, huh? No. Actually, he meant that because we are free to create our own life, we must take full responsibility for our actions. Man is condemned to be free, is how he put mm -hmm. it. Condemned to be free. But then, others will take it upon themselves to define who you are. I've been feeling that way lately. <laughs> I keep telling people to call me Snake, but nobody seems to listen. Satra also says, hell is other people. Hell. Well, we are outside of heaven. Huh, <laughs> deep. Do you have an interest in the visual art snake? Not really. Please, no deep conversation. <laughs> but you have heard of Picasso, yes? Yeah, I've heard the name. Sadly, Monsieur Picasso, co-founder of Cubism, passed away in the south of France last year. <clears throat> France was his home, you know. Huh? I thought he was born in Spain. Do you know his full name? Pablo Picasso. Anyone would know he's Spanish with a name like... Huh. Shows what do you know. What do you mean? Okay, here we go. <gasps> Pablo Diego José Francisco de la Palo Juan Nepomucino Maria de los Remedios Cipriano de la Santísima Trinidad Ruiz y Picasso. <sighs> what do you think? That was his full name. Still... I don't see how... A master of modern art. A genius who crafted over 100,000 works in various styles, spending the greater part of his life in France. The man is a part of our culture. Yeah, that kind of stuff is of limited use in my field. Mm -hmm. But back to the point. Picasso was Spanish, right? Or am I missing something? Hmm. He wasn't French, right? Right. <sighs> Cecile... What difference does it make? It does not matter if he was from Spain or from Mars. Picasso is Picasso. It does not change the fact that he lived in France, nor does it take away from his monumental legacy. Why do you care so much about where he was from, anyway? Whatever happened to the sans frontier part of uh -huh. Militaire sans frontier? Oh, you started it. France was his... What was that? Nothing. <laughs> Uh, I know how you feel, Snake. Hmm. <laughs> Tell me, Snake, do you ever put sweets in your rations? Never thought about it before. Why? Ah, I simply love them. French sweets are très délicieux. Everyone knows crepes, but there are also profiteroles, éclairs, madeleines, financier. Then there's tartatin. And you can't forget Savarin. Oh, and Milpule, crepes, Blancmange. Yeah, you already mentioned crepes. <laughs> <laughs> Soufflés, Croquembouche, Canel, Florentine, Queen Amagne, Peach Melbas. Uh, finished? <gasps> and macaroons. I love those the most. Macaroon Parisian are the best. They are so cute and colorful. And they contain meringue, so they melt right in your mouth. Wow. I would no idea macaroons were that popular in France, too. What do you mean in France, too? 
Macaroons are those coconut flavored cookies, right? <gasps> Excuse you? Macaroons mm -hmm. contain almond powder, not coconuts. Don't they have peanuts in them? I've had them in Japan a few times. I thought they were called macarons. <gasps> macarons? Some cheap imitation, I am sure. French macaroons have a long and distinguished history. They dead back to the 16th century when Catherine de' Medici of Florence married into the French royal family. The story goes that her patissier shared the recipe after they arrived. That is a history of over 500 years. So, they're originally from <laughs> Italy then. Uh, well, I... Don't macaroons come from Italy too? Uh, look, I do not really think... Keep in mind, macaron is almost identical to macaroni. Well... That settles it. I cannot believe this. To associate macaroons with macaroni? You, Monsieur Miller, are an insensible oaf. Hey, hey, why am I the bad guy? Come on, Cecile, wait. Cecile! <sighs> I knew they recorded these in some awkward room. Uh, but I don't know how to explain Miller being there. I had this feeling of him lingering outside of the door and slipping in. Hello? Snake? Mon chéri? You've been drinking, Cecile? <sighs> Can't you please do something about this pest? Oh, no. Monsieur Miller! Uh, what's he done now? Wine. Wine. He said he thought the soldiers might tire of having beer all the time. So he's brought in some wine instead. And then he gave me a bunch. Well, that was nice of him. But the past two years have been bad for French wine. Perhaps it is the bad weather we have had. But whatever the case, I told him the last thing you want to be drinking right now is French wine. Well... California and Chile have good wine, too. But then he goes and stocks the pantry with nothing but French wine from 72. <coughs> the stuff is a disaster. Then he says, come on, Cecile, have a taste of the old country. <sighs> I had a terrible feeling about it. So I decided just to taste it at first. And then again... And then a few more times. <laughs> Took one for the team, huh? But when you do a tasting, don't you usually spit the wine out? But bottle after bottle, nothing but garbage. Absolute garbage. <gasps> Not one half decent bottle in the whole lot. Test of the old country, he says. Sorry to hear that. Ugh, I cannot believe this. What will we do with all this wine? The guys are too picky when it comes to taste. Ugh! You sound just like Monsieur Miller. Huh? When I complained, he simply said, As long as it gets the job done. <sighs> you people are such culinary savages. Allez to vous faire voir. <sighs> Somebody take me back to Paris. Please. <sighs> I, uh, think you've had a little too much, Cecile. Oh, oh, what's this? You seem like a very, how do I put this, uninhibited woman. You think so? I am no different from other Parisian women. Not since May 1968. May 1968? The general strike that almost brought down the president? Right. But it was more than just a strike. It started with the student movement at Strasbourg University in 66. They did not want anything from the country, but instead sought reform at the school. That helped ignite a fire in the hearts of scores of dissatisfied young people. And the movement spread all over France. Great. It was more than just opposition to Vietnam and the de Gaulle administration. People also called for free love and the breaking away from other old values. Looking back, 
I am not sure what the main goal really was. Exactly. But whatever the case, it was more of a young people's movement than a strike or a protest. So, it was like the hippies or something? In some ways, perhaps. But we weren't blinded by mysticism, nor did we seek a return to <laughs> nature. I see. So, while they wanted to retreat to their closed communes... We tried to change the world. And in doing so, we learned that when everyone comes together, it can be done. You had a lot more success. In America, hippies have just become a social problem. While I hear Japan's student movements crashed and burned. I wonder what was different. Good question. I'd like Miller? to know myself. Oh. Well, that's disappointing. <sighs> I was looking forward to some more Miller. Rest in peace.